How's it going, New World? Sephir here, and today I have been hard at work on the PTR testing the new systems. As you can see here, we have the Gypsum Kiln, which is part of the Expertise system, which is going to be rolling out soon. It's going to be your prime way of getting expertise upgrades or watermark upgrades as we used to call them before but now since we're converting to this new system everything's going to be a little bit different it's going to offer you a lot of daily activities that you can do to increase your watermarks and they're going to be located in high level zones only so if you look in like everfall or something you will not see them located there but you will see them located in like eden's grove uh, places like Shattered Mountain, uh, the little icon looks a little bit like a snow hut type area. Uh, so that's going to be where that's kind of going to be located in. So it's going to be any end game high level zone. As you can see, there's also one in um, Ebon Scale here down at the bottom. So a lot of good things that you can check out there. So with that in mind, uh, there's going to be pretty much one located for you everywhere you go. So it's going to be a part of your new normal routine so you're going to see it just like a smelting station or any other station like that and this is the part where it gets interesting is because the gypsum kiln is going to be something that you're going to be doing every 22 hours constantly to get expertise up if you want to there's tons of activities that you can do and we'll break it down into two structures here the first part of the gypsum kiln is going to be gypsum orbs which are something you create every 22 hours by doing different activities and we'll talk about those here in a second uh, there's different colors as you can see the color just corresponds to an activity that's all that does uh, so we'll go ahead and create one here and as you can see we created the first one we got one there's some no bonus amount and as you can see it went on a cooldown it's now a 21 hour and 59 minute cooldown which means that we cannot make a second one until 22 hours and so at first i thought this system was just going to be like okay you pick one thing that you want to do but actually you could just do everything right so if you're like me you could do a lot of things but we'll talk about how you can spend these first so like let's say if i want to use this orb i would target a specific item let's say i want a life staff uh upgrade i would then go down to the bottom with this gypsum casting i would spend my orb and purchase a life staff cast the life staff cast is simply a box that will have a guaranteed expertise or watermark upgrade for me and it will give me something there it could be you know good it could be bad but whatever it is this level up thing will pop up on your screen it'll say life staff expertise upgrade 520 whatever right i'm 500 on the ptr so if you were in the actual game this would be like 600 or whatever your watermark was right so as you can see that went on a cooldown as well 21 hours 59 minutes so you see the theme here 22 hour cooldown for the cast as well so whenever you spend your orb on an item it will have a cooldown but as you can see on these other items i can still craft them so i can create orbs on 22 hour cooldowns that are separate from each other and i also, i can also create gypsum casts which are on separate cooldowns from each other as well for another 22 hours so here you can see that i can make an additional one i'm going to go ahead and make that the emerald orb and i'll go ahead and craft that and as you can see, I now have two on different cooldowns. One's at 58 minutes, the other one's at 59. So it is proven that you can create multiples of these per day. So that's going to make this very interesting. And what you can see here, now I can select something else. The life staff is redded out, which means I can't create it again. So I'll just create an amulet. And once again, for just, you know, example's sake, we'll go ahead and open it up. You can see I got a green amulet, 518, woohoo. But here's the level up thing, amulet, jewelry, expertise, 518. So I know that I did, in fact, get an upgrade for myself. Uh, what happens when you have 600 gear score? We don't know, but we're theorizing that you get a 600 gear score item or something in that appropriate level range so that's going to make these things very powerful we'll have to see how that actually truly works on the live version but uh, we'll get there eventually uh, so for now this is the best testing that we can do so going over these you can see this different type of orb so the first one we have here is the gypsum orb and the gypsum uh sorry not gypsum orb the obsidian gypsum orb which is going to be located from 60 plus open world bosses uh typically found in elite landmarks so that's going to be 
something that is in an elite zone. We tested to kind of see where this was, and we went to places like uh, where Faye the Protector was in, what is this place called? Sprayla Tower. And uh, we killed him a few times, and we didn't get anything. We also went to the Lonely Climb, and we killed Dao Shen and uh, Si Wang and those guys, but we also still did not get any orbs. But when we head over to Caminus area, and we went to fight Overseer Levy, we did get an orb from him. We also went down south a little bit and tried to kill the Caminus Gate Lord. Uh, he was supposedly able to drop it on a table, however we didn't get it, but it seemed to be about a 25% chance, so we ended up camping Levy quite a bit. Uh, so there are enemies within Mirgard and some other places that can drop it, like the Leviathan of the Deep and the Shattered Mines. Uh, so there's a full list of this actually on the New World database where you can go ahead and check and the uh, Siren's Lair is also another good place So if you go to Siren's Lair, that's gonna be a fantastic place to get named elite monsters But it has to be an elite zone so keep that in mind So uh, zones that are not elite zones will not count uh, But you know just go check out New World database You'll be able to look on there what that item specifically is you can go to the PTR build of it and search it up So shout out to Shio and we'll reference another part of his material later on in the video uh, so a double shout out to him uh, so go check that out if you guys can I'll have a link in the description so back to the gypsum orbs so now that we've talked about the obsidian gypsum orb there are a few other types and colors uh, so do keep in mind that that's not a hundred percent guarantee when you get this orbs and they do require different different amounts so as you can see here this one requires one this is the sapphire gypsum this is gonna be from defeating the final boss in Lazarus instrumentality and or the Garden of Genesis, so that's your option. So if you complete one dungeon every day, you will get the 22 hour cooldown on the Sapphire Gypsum Orb, which will give you another Gypsum Orb to spend on an upgrade that you want. But do keep in mind, you can only get one upgrade for the type every 22 hours. So you're gonna have to start picking different types like weapon or ring or something like that. So you can see that different count there. You know, this one takes three, the other one takes one. So they're all gonna have like a various task and a separate cooldown on them. Uh, so going on to the next one is gonna be the Emerald Gypsum. The Emerald Gypsum is going to be found in Trade Skill Aptitude Reward Containers. And this is gonna be another one where I will reference Yo's post because he has a great post about how uh, trade skill aptitude works and the XP values for it. And we'll also be making another video talking about that. But the Emerald one is going to come from whenever you level up to 200 in a trade skill and then you level up again in a little marker point, you're then going to get an Emerald uh, gemstone. And you can see it's just going to be a different color from the other one, but it still requ like, requires the same amount. Uh, so you'll be able to create these on different cooldowns. So this system, as you can see here, is kind of trending in a little bit of a pattern. It's like, hey, go do this activity collect this color of orb or gypsum or whatever and then come back to us and create this thing so i think what the developer's intent was is to make you do a little bit of everything um, or at least give you the option to do what you want to do in order to progress your character so i think that's the ideal concept behind this thing which is you know pretty interesting if you ask me uh, next one we'll move on to is the Citrine Gypsum. This is going to be found in Arena Cache. So that's going to be talking about the Siren Queen's Lair, uh, the Protector's Arena in, in the Eternal Pools, and also the Spriggan's Arena in uh, Eden's Grove. So if you kill and defeat one of these bosses every 22 hours, you will get the Citrine Gypsum. The next one is going to be the Amthyst, Amthyst Gypsum. This one is actually a little bit complicated. As you can see, you need seven of them. We'll go ahead and craft it here just to kind of create the orb, and we'll deal with that later and pick something there. Uh, but you can see that these are coming from Corrupted Breaches. So a breach is anything on the map, any corrupted portal. It doesn't matter if it's a major or a minor portal, it will give you credit all the same. It actually doesn't even matter what level the portal is. I did several level 25 portals and I did several level 65 portals. And I found that sometimes I would just get them from the 25 minor portals. Sometimes the major portals would not give me a gypsum. It was about a 25% drop rate in my opinion. I did do quite a few portals, uh, but you will go around and close these things to get these shards. So you need seven of them, so it's going to take you a little while to grind that out if you choose to do so. But it is worth it because you will get an additional gypsum orb, which means one additional expertise upgrade every single day if you keep on top of it. 
The next item we have is the Ruby Gypsum. The Ruby Gypsum is found in Outpost Rush Cache, so you're going to be doing two Outpost Rush every day. If you do two Outpost Rush, you will be able to get this. You can also choose to opt out of it if you don't want. And the final one is the Topaz Gypsum. This one's special. Let's go ahead and head over to the tent here, as you can see. Oh, well, I don't actually have a tent, so I'm going to have to create a tent, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, as soon as this turkey stops trolling me, I'll go ahead and get some materials here. Uh, but these, this next one is created in Arcana, but it's also available to be created in a tent for some reason. Uh, it's all the way down at the bottom in a scroll, but the Topaz Gypsum comes from a special potion that you can make. This potion has a one-week cooldown, and it requires five of every elemental animal in the game. Now, some people are talking about, oh, the elemental animal price is going to go up. Yeah, sort of, but not really, because it's the best way to get moats right now and you can only make one of these potions every week so the amount of materials required is not going to be very high i would not expect elemental animals price to go up until dungeon mutations come out because when they do people will be wanting uh special tinctures and things like that to actually progress in the dungeons but until that happens it's not going to matter uh, as you can see we have an 18 percent chance to crash additional items up at the top so this does follow the arcana skill pattern if you were to have 200 arcana instead of 180 you would have a 20% chance to craft additional items. So this makes leveling up Arcana worth a lot, in my opinion, because you get access to this potion that's on a one-week cooldown. It lasts for 60 minutes, and it will enable you to get Topaz Gypsum from monsters level 55 and higher. So you basically pop this potion, and then you would uh, you know, just go on a killing frenzy, I guess, and kill whatever you could see that's 55 or higher. So let's go ahead and craft this here and see if we can actually get the extra proc here in a second, because you know, supposedly it says that we can actually proc this extra, uh, so it would be wonderful if we could actually get proof of concept on this. Uh, so let's go ahead and roll it. And yes, we do actually get the second prawn. That's beautiful. That's exactly what you want to see. So you can get two of these potions every week if you're lucky, I guess. So may the odds be in your favor. Good luck on that one. I think that's a bit of an oversight. I think that they should change that. Um, I, I don't know. That, that feels a little dirty that some people would get two potions. Maybe some people would get one a week. But as you can see in the bottom right corner, it's on a six-day, 22-hour cooldown and 59 minutes. Uh, so that's going to be the limit or the cap on the amount of topaz gems you can see. And as you can see, here's the potion. Uh, I have two of them in my inventory, which is fantastic. Uh, so we can definitely do quite a lot with that. So I think that's a bit of a strange system uh, for that one. We'll go ahead and use it just for effect. And it looks like, you know, it gives me this little gem buff at the bottom of my screen. I don't know if there's any level 55 monsters here. No, it looks like these guys are 51. Okay, uh, I guess that's not going to matter. So uh, we'll test that in another video then. And we'll basically just kind of, you know, let you know what the drop rate of those potion shards are. And how that's going to be affecting everything. Since I have two potions, it's no problem. We'll just run it back again later uh, but anyways back to the gypsum kiln here because now we're going to take a look at how everything works in a whole so once we get those 10 gypsum uh, topaz fragments we'll be able to create another gypsum orb and this one should be able to also be created on a 22 hour cooldown but you're going to be limited by the amount of topaz gypsum shards that you can get because again you can only make the potion once per week or two if you're super lucky like i am apparently uh, so you could basically uh well my luck's on the ptr not in the real game so <laughs> we'll see how that goes uh, so you would be able to create potentially two of these per week so all in all you are going to have six orbs that you're going to be able to create on a daily reliable 22 hour cooldown and then you'll be able to choose your choice of six casts per day as long as they're different types and maybe an additional one every week uh, that you could get extra from this topaz gypsum so that's going to add to your daily routine if you really want to min max and of course you don't have to do all this by all means play at your own pace do what you have time for it's not that important right um you could still get really good items from dungeons um, and in fact, dungeons are actually better than this progression system with the new way that dungeons are working. We'll do a full video on that and show all the details here coming up really soon. But essentially, the dungeon changes allow for every single boss within the instance to be giving you 
uh, a dungeon upgrade or an expertise upgrade, right? So even if you don't want to do this gypsum thing, you can still just grind dungeons and probably get more expertise upgrades, right? Um, so we'll talk a little bit about this too. As you can see on my screen, I got 200 in logging. I got this aptitude box. Uh, that was what I'm going to put a link in the description for that aptitude guide uh, on how to earn those. But in my opinion, I went with logging. It seems to be decent and we'll have a full thing coming out here in a little bit. Actually, later on today, we'll have a video talking about the best way to get the aptitude box. But that's going to be how you get the emerald gypsum. Uh, which is going to be a good way to, uh, you know, hit something daily. So when we're talking about hitting something daily, we want to get something really fast. So that will be this follow-up video where we'll talk about how to get the fastest gypsum orb for that trade skill aptitude so that you keep hitting that 22-hour cooldown without having to do too much effort <laughs> or anything like that. Um, so, uh, once again, I uh, wanted to just thank everybody for taking the time to watch this video. If you have not already, make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell. Uh, if you've already done that, make sure to check out the join button as you can become a member today. And we also have a Discord where you can uh, hang out with us and just uh, chat in general. So if that's something you want to do, go ahead and look for it or check uh, down below for that one. All right. Thanks for your time, everyone. We will catch you in the next video.